Investors, thanks for tuning in to Pre-Market Prep with Stock Odds. Let's take a look at where the S&P futures are here today. Uh, currently, let's see. Currently, we're up about 0.1% uh, at 4217 for the E-minis. Uh, then for the dollar, we're about down 0.1% uh, at 104 flat. Uh, the bonds, that's up about 1.2% at 127.05. Crude, that's down about three, almost four percent at sixty-nine eighty-nine. Uh, gold, that's up about 0.7% at nineteen fifty-eight. Uh, silver, that's down about 0.3% at twenty-three uh, twenty-nine. And Bitcoin, that's up about 0.1% at twenty-seven thousand six hundred and seventy. Well, Rob, how are you doing this morning? Too bad. You have a good long weekend. Uh, well, I mean, it wasn't a long weekend for me, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was good. How about yourself? <laughs> Not bad. Um, you know, just to to reflect a little bit. I mean, if people do keep a, a journal over the years, you can see that um, we often get this um, uh, pre long weekend rally. Um, I I tend to think that there's a bit more risk geopolitically and else uh, around the world in in when we have these long weekends and and your your risk on holding over a weekend any positions is is greater than you know say holding from Monday night to Tuesday or something like that yeah um so you know there's just more things that can happen especially like in merger land deals are made on the golf course on the weekend and things <laughs> like that so I always look at it from a risk perspective but there is always this sort of uh, rally kind of anticipation for a long weekend. I guess traders and investors need a rest and they need a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, they always get I so mean, optimistic. In this case too, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and in this case, too, we had the expectations of, of something getting done uh, on the debt ceiling thing, which, uh, you know, in, in principle, some things have been agreed to. And, of course, it has to go to vote yet, right? But uh, mm -hmm. uh, that was the... The, you know, the market factoring every, in everything that it knows or can anticipate. Yeah. It just doesn't key. factor in surprises very well. So if we get some kind of a shocker, that's that's where it uh, it tends to react uh, violently. But um, yeah, it does factor in things as as we move along. Right. Yeah. That's, that's why when you does. that's why when you get like when you get to. $150 a barrel in oil, uh, if we ever get there, um, it's, you know, the outcome and the, and the action on the stocks are not as they were when you're expecting it to go there or when you're on that journey to go there. Mm -hmm. So markets are factoring in ahead of time. So when it arrives at the destination, it's often not the outcome that people think. Yeah. Well, the market's already um, could be the same thing the here with a trillion dollar market cap on Nvidia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking yeah. of uh, of semiconductors, yeah, that was quite the run on Nvidia. Uh, well, that actually will take us into last week's performance. So, just going over uh, the last um, the the weekly top ten list uh, that you can actually go subscribe to. The links down in the description. Stock Odds puts out a list of the top ten stocks for every week uh, and every month and they there's there's a lot to choose from but anyway this is for the week and so last week the portfolio was down about 2.6 uh, percent and the main culprit was smci so let's take a look at that one i'll just bring up the charts here so this one super micro computer uh, I mean, it's uh, it's semiconductor related. It it basically popped up once Nvidia was popping up, and so uh, that one uh, was a short for the week. So it uh, it didn't didn't do so well in the portfolio. But hey, investors holding it are uh, are certainly uh, happy now, or they should be. <laughs> so well, you know, on on that note, let's just let's just dive into this here a bit because. Um, you know, the, the lists are not vetted from a perspective of some of the other pillars, right? Let's, let's go through a reminder from 
from the Learning Academy, uh, what we talk about with pillars. So six fundamental foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Six pillars of trading that, that, you know, I sink my teeth into over many, many years. Um, and these are just my six pillars that I came up with, but the fundamental foundation and not necessarily in this order, but it can be important. Fundamentals can matter at certain times. You know, I mean, Warren Buffett didn't go and buy, Dinergy's assets, for example, because the Dinergy crossed a 200-day moving average. He bought them because they were on sale and there was a, you know, an opportunity, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, fundamentals matter, right? And he, he he's even complained in the past, hey, uh, yeah, I should have sold Coke when it was, you know, at, at 80 PE or something like this, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So fundamentals do matter at various times, not all the time, uh, in the sense of how the market responds and plays out and, you know, where people's attitudes are at. Because for years, it's a lot. Ah, PEs don't matter. You know, it's uh, it's about <laughs> the future. It's about the potential. It's about the home runs. It's everybody's going to be an Amazon. You know, if Amazon did it, everybody can do it. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's been a point, lot of things, the, the market for for quite a few years now but i mean we've seen a return to well i mean except for 2022 yeah. i mean when when you I, I can go back and 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 look at some of the comments i made um when we started into 2022 um and that was regarding the shift that i saw fundamentally and they were actually on day two of the year, they were selling all the high PE multiples and buying all the low stuff. And, and that was that was clear. And you can see why the Dow Jones outperformed the NASDAQ, you know, for the year mm -hmm. um, until, uh, you know, until the end of the year. So, I mean, it was quite a difference. Now, this year is, you know, the, the queues are on fire and, and NASDAQ's on fire and technology's on fire and even consumer discretionary with Tesla in there and stuff has been great. Um, so we have that mean reversion happening um, from the discount last year to to where people wanted to re, re, redeploy money. And it started with the tax loss selling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But let me share my screen here and bring up uh, this stock and look at something here. Sure. Okay. Um, share screen. And looks like screen two should work here. There you go. Tell me if you can see that. Yep. Um, so that's the chart. And if we just, let's just pull up the monthly there and we can obviously see that um, this thing wasn't doing too much, um, except that it started to uh, pick up here actually in about the middle of uh, 2022. Um, so it was a, kind of bucking the trend a little bit, but very, you know, low price stock and very, very consolidated. So what was going what was going on here? And this is this is where fundamentals can creep into the outcome is something was starting to change with this uh, particular company. And I think it shows up in this EPS, right? Earnings per share. Um, sales obviously increasing, but you didn't have you didn't have dilution. So you mm -hmm. had the same amount of shares and yet the earnings per share was increasing and sales were increasing so it's not just you know revenue only but it's actual profits that are starting to come in so something something was going on and when we look at uh you know very low debt to equity um we look at uh, pe was was reasonable for a tech company not like like not crazy, like, you know, 80 <laughs> like, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or 100 right? or something, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, market cap, it was still, you know, in the uh, small to mid cap space. Uh, but overall, um, look at even uh, price to book was a little bit elevated. So um, that could be a concern. But again, technology stocks often have a little difference there. Return on assets, return on equity, good. EPS projections for next year are interesting, though, um, kind of lower. But, uh, you know, it was there was something something changing here in terms of 
the flat line without a heartbeat. And then something started in a bad year, it started to creep up. So that was prior to us getting involved, obviously, on the short side. Yeah. So if we, you know, took take a look at um, you know, what was what was happening here this week, um, from the week before, um, it came in as a short. And I don't see anything wrong with that on a, a technical perspective, especially with the reversal on May 19th. I uh, don't really see anything wrong with that. But when you look at, do you really want to be short uh, this kind of a candidate? I think that there are, you know, better shorts when you're dealing with a, a, a smaller cap company that has some metrics that, you know, are more robust. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it doesn't have any real red flags. Uh, it's been it's been moving up. It could have been it could have been vetted and said, well, I'm not really comfortable with that short. I'd rather go with a larger market cap, something that's, you know, really mature, overvalued. You know, it doesn't have any sizzle, doesn't have any pizzazz. It's not a sexy stock, that kind of thing. That might be be better for a short Um, as it was. It probably wouldn't have done too much to us the week, except that all of a sudden NVIDIA comes along. And, um, you know, this is in the computer hardware space. So NVIDIA moved, you know, chip makers, uh, it moved hardware, it moved software, moved anything connected with AI. And, 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 and you know what? Everybody's going to do the, the KFC, KFC thing, and that is, we've got blockchain too. Or we've got <laughs> AI too. Yeah, we've got AI, AI too, you know. And, I mean, you, you yeah. start looking through the news, you're going to see AI added to everything. I mean, yeah. it's going to be like a, a, a trucking company. We suddenly added AI, you know, and our, our, our drivers now have, you know, chat GPT monocles and, you know, <laughs> whatever, right? Do you see what I'm saying? It's going to be yeah. like, this This is what happens when, uh, and you know what? It is exploited, it's taken advantage of, and uh People are extremely gullible. They like to uh, chase things that are hot. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of regret uh, when they miss something. And they like to finally get up the courage. Uh, it's, I don't want to miss it anymore. And then they usually get in at the wrong time, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what that tends to happen. Yep. So there's a bubble. Yeah, there's a bubble forming in AI at, at some point. It won't. We don't know where the top is exactly. It'll have to prove itself. Um, but um, if you go to, you know, if you go to look at uh, SMH um, semiconductors, mm-hmm. there's uh, there's some potential for it to go and test the uh, December. Well, this one actually November, December, January highs right up here. There's some great resistance here. So I'm, I'm yeah, really interested like in this. Top there. It, I'm really interested in this spot up here. I'm going to give it that breathing room up there. Uh, same thing with the socks. Uh, let's put it on the daily here, or actually monthly. It's better. Um, so, uh, you know, it had a high in December and January. So, again, give give it some breathing room here. And if you're looking through, um, you know, a lot of the uh, semiconductors, you know, they, they are going to have times where they pull back, just like today. They're going to be somewhat uh, reflective of the market conditions, too. So, like, Marvel had an incredible day on Friday after earnings, and uh, it's pulling back a little bit today. But would I would I step in front of it at this point and, and not give it that breathing room? Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's it, there's you know, there's going to be trades that are potentially less risky um who says this is riskier on the long side than the short side depends on you know what the traction is that it gets after the the earnings um, and what new level it trades at and then if it doesn't actually pull back um it could break up and and move higher yet but obviously uh these kind of moves change the price ratios right so it's price to earnings it's price to sales it's you know right. price to book all gets changed when the price gets elevated so investors will have to look at the new 
valuation based on price and decide whether uh, it's warranted to uh, stay invested or whether it's it's uh, better to take the profit and move on. And that's where these crowded trades uh, can be a problem is that, uh, you know, often it's best to sell if you were if you owned it, it's best to sell into strength and not wait for everybody to hit the exit. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, you could come in and they are hitting the exit at the open. And guess what happens? Uh, it's already down and it's filling that gap. You, you follow me? Yeah. And then you've yes. lost your opportunity. So, so I mean, it, it is yeah. tough. Yeah. Uh, AI, AI, AI is in, you know, vogue right now. And there's going to be, you know, lots of action in the semiconductor space. And you want to stay, well, it, I, I suppose you, you don't want to go against the herd necessarily but are you paying attention to which of these do have strong fundamentals behind them so that they may stay elevated or or how are you looking at this yeah i mean to me it start it start it comes into play now about um you know what what are the fundamentals after these moves so everything again based on price ratio price you know price to earnings price to sales price to book right you know, it, it all matters right yeah it, uh, it all um, comes so to computer the end. <laughs> um so computer hardware here computer hardware i wouldn't so think one of the one of the things spot. one of the things that could happen yeah. is let's say for example you're carrying the five you know you're carrying the smci um like it was on the list and you didn't vet it and you're in it and then you go into uh, after hours and it is important to keep an eye on some of these bigger, more influential stocks. If you look at the top 10 traded stocks among all brokers, I don't care if it's Schwab or, you know, interactive brokers or wh whatever uh, you want to look at. Mm -hmm. The top 10 are very similar, if not the same, all across all brokerage, which means, you know, Tesla is like one of the top <laughs> traded stocks. Yeah, right. That'd be a top uh, Robin Hood. NVIDIA. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And NVIDIA also, mm -hmm. right, is one of the top uh, 10 and has risen in the ranks because of the earnings. So, um, you know, they're all playing the same thing. That's why these trades get really crowded. And, and works both ways, both on the buy side and the sell side. Um, so, you know, being aware of what earnings are after hours or pre-market is important, especially for the most influential stocks, because NVIDIA, as you've seen, influenced other stocks. Yeah. Even Marvel, as you've seen, influenced other stocks. You know, we have Broadcom this week. It could influence other stocks. Um, and so this is the list of, you know, some computer hardware makers that SMCI falls into. So you're, you're at your computer after hours. You know, usually they report pretty quickly after the bell. You, you, you see NVIDIA and you go, whoa, blow away earnings or whatever. It stocks gap, you know, just jumps and whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, um, and you you have you have S <laughs> SMCI short. What do you do? <laughs> you quickly go to your other symbols that are related that also might have some uh, you know reasonable volume to to get involved in after hours. Like you don't want a spread of ten dollars where you you know you have that kind of risk and there's no volume. Um, but you quickly look to see if there's anything else. And you could buy some sympathy stocks because you have a major catalyst. And mm -hmm. it would be unlikely if that if that thing, you know, had the blowing earnings and then had the response in the market like it did and jumps, it's going to pull other things with it. So you're really... example a person's trading after hours and they're trading these kind of relationships 
um, and didn't have any positions on, but are looking for opportunity, they would do essentially some of the same things. They would buy some of the, the junior or smaller stocks um, that might follow, and then they would short, you know, with the queues or uh, with some other uh, ETF could even be like XLK. These things are liquid after hours. Um, so you're, you could even be buying stuff that's not super liquid, but as long as you can hedge off with a liquid uh, thing. They probably don't step in and just automatically short NVIDIA as the hedge. There's better solutions, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because right? then, then you're trading the story. You want to try to trade the things that aren't the story and then, you know, hedge with something that has also already moved, but it's not specifically the story. Like the cues were not the story, even though they contain NVIDIA. Same thing again on Marvel, you know, um, the next day. Um, but that's one thing that you can do. But that means that you have to be more proactive. So in, in the five-day uh, list, there is the opportunity, one, to vet it and make sure that you're comfortable with the symbols that are, you know, presented. Number two, there are times to take a profit or even add to a position. I don't consider the action on this um, 15 minute here. I don't consider this worthy of adding to the position on Thursday. Mm. Add adding to the position as in adding to the short. Yeah, adding to the short on S. I don't. I don't think that's necessary to step and, and make something worse to step in front of that freight train kind of thing. It had a catalyst, not specifically on this stock, but in sympathy to Nvidia. And, but it's a bigger. It's a bigger picture thing. And it's like, I don't need to risk any more capital. Mm -hmm. The appropriate thing would be if I want to. If I want to risk capital. Let me go into other things that might also go on the journey, but haven't kicked in yet. You know, they're lagging a little bit. There, there wasn't, there wasn't that immediate uh, gold rush. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That definitely does. And I mean, specifically with all this AI uh, news and trends with well, Nvidia or Supermicro here, uh, it's. Any company that's dealing with data center products, I think, are ones that are going to be playing in sympathy. So you could look for some, you know, data, uh, other companies that supply data centers with that, because that's where all the AI, uh, you know, prowess is coming from. They're running all these models there. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's software, too. It's it. Listen, this is spilling over to my buddies at D-Wave, you know, um, is spilling over to quantum, both on the hardware side and on the software side too, right? So anything related to <laughs> quantum is also going to start picking up, and 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 you know yeah. there there's there's all kind of interconnected relationships. So I mean, you need chips to power this, to do this, or this, this. You need software, you know. Um, but the the other thing will be everybody else that is the me too crowd that just wants to, you know, take and stamp AI uh, onto that. I mean, this isn't the first round. We've already had this kind of like, you know, great expectations for J for AI. But I think what, what made it more um, commonplace is kind of like what happened to Tesla. You know, we had electric vehicles back in the... <laughs> The roaring 20s essentially <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know we've, we've had electric vehicles for a long time yeah uh you know tesla kind of did even though it was pricey they kind of did what volkswagen did and that's made the people's car you know uh <laughs> in a in electric electrification and yeah, so made it appealing um, to the masses why are there why are there why are there more white teslas than anything else well because you have to pay for uh paint color if you want otherwise yeah. you get white uh, so it's to me, it's the people's car uh, electrified, um, and you know you you've seen this where um, AI has already been there, but it was it was really Chat GPT that made it more like oh 
I get it. I get the use case. I, you know, Hey, I can do this. It's not, it's not that type of play. It's got too small of a market cap. It's got too good of earnings. Um, and so, uh, you know, not every company that has super in its name is super, but, yeah. but this one is, a this one is a little bit more super than, than the other supers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, it's super. super I'm, I'm not yeah. recommending it, Josh. I'm not recommending. I'm just saying that it's it's a little bit more maybe true to its name than some of the other supers out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just a reminder. You know, none of this is uh, financial advice. This is only only for informational purposes. These are just opinions. We're just showing information that uh, that's available to everyone. So, uh, <laughs> just to get that in there. <laughs> Well, uh, okay, I'll stop sharing. I'll put it back to you for anything you want to. Yeah, put up well, there. why don't we take a look at where the current uh, portfolio is? So, uh, Stock Odds put out its new weekly list. I mean, it's a shortened week this week, but uh, it's actually, be, yeah, four days. Kind of I mean, and, and that's a good thing to mention is because you know it is a compressed week and we have some uh, some reports and also some other earnings and um. I think the market's, you know, ha- going to have this turn of the month effect as well. I mean, it's not a huge one. The, the end of May is a little bit soft and the beginning of June is not fantastic um, historically. But given the circumstances, it's all kind of connected to the debt ceiling vote. And we're also kind of forward looking to the middle of the month with um, – we have two two events in the middle of the month. We have the FOMC two day meeting, and then we have expiration on the Friday as well. And you also have the month where people are looking at Russell, you know, rebalancing uh, coming up and stuff. So it can be a month where you do get trends. June has had that historically, um, so uh, you know, be aware of the things that are on fire could continue for much longer than you expect. Um, things that have been kind of behind a little bit might uh, decide me too, me too. I want to catch up. So, so just be respectful of the trends that can happen in June. This is not, it's not unusual for the month of June. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely want to pay attention to seasonality there. Um, well, anyway, yeah, the portfolio, this is just, you know, 10 longs, 10 shorts, uh, about a thousand bucks put on each symbol there. I mean, it's pretty much flat at the moment, but, uh, the current outperformer is, uh, Schrodinger, I believe it is. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so this is a short, uh, it popped up this morning a bit and, uh, it's gone our favor so far, but what would you look at here? um for the week uh, for you know would you be looking to take a target at you know last week's low or what would you be looking at here if you were in this short um yeah i mean you could you could create an if then statement say uh i'm gonna i'm gonna target last week's low um or again use that formula that we've discussed where you take the I minus the low divide in half and and add that to the open price and and look at it there. So could look at it at that point. We call that kind of a, a pivot weekly pivot structure. Mm-hmm. Um, you could look at it at the low. And but the thing is, it depends on how it gets there too. If it's moving there with, you know, good signal, low noise, not a lot of volatility. You know, really force yourself to stay with it. Don't just take profit because it's green because you're going to have some things go against you too. So you can't just take all, all the green stuff off and leave all the red. You're not going to have a, a fun time with that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but it, it if you do see a chance to take the profit and it looks like it's kind of finished the move, then you also need to replace that with some other symbol that has, again, new potential. And you could go to our, you know, three-day dashboards because the RSI percent B, well, percent B is 10 days, RSI performance streaks, they're all three days. You might find something off the dashboard to put back in there, or you can go to the web screener and do a search for close to close three days. And if you take this one off at a profit, find something else to put in its place so that you can keep that capital uh, rolling to, you know, a new potential, new advantage. 
Yeah, yeah, you want to keep it working for you. Uh, got a question here from uh, MC Dr. Pepper. <laughs> he wants to uh, know where we think the queues will close for the day. Uh, so if do you Do- wanna... Dr. Pepper, uh, <laughs> Dr. Pepper, you know, think about Coke and Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's uh... do, do, a, do a triad pair there. You know, uh, where's the queues going to close for the day? Is that the question? That's the question. Let's uh, yeah, maybe. take. Wow. A I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, if I had a crystal ball, maybe, but um, I mean, it's so, impossible so the, to really know. The thing is, we yeah. we opened up on this expectation we pulled back. We did not completely fill the gap, right? Mm-hmm. You got the cues up there? Yeah. It's so small, I can't really see it. Very well, well. Here, uh, um, here's the daily chart. Yeah. So, I mean, when we, we opened up um, as expected. I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't, that didn't take rocket scientists to say, you know, we're probably going to open up. Um, even though we'd already rallied, I mean, it's a bit of a follow through, a bit of like uh, some of the, the news over the weekend kind of relief rally here a little bit, but we did pull back, but we didn't completely fill the gap. Okay. So it's stronger than that. Um, So I would say that, um, you know, looking towards the end of the day, um, again, it depends on any new pieces of information that come out in the news. We are still being held hostage by specifically the, the end results on this debt ceiling and the pieces of information that come along. Uh, so uh, mm-hmm. anything could move the market. And that's what makes it really tricky to, you know, take a guess. You know, it's not like, it's not like Friday's move where we had, if you roll back to Friday on a, say one minute chart there, can you do that? Sure. Yeah. Or three minute, either one minute or three minutes is fine. But look at the signal to noise ratio on Friday for the queues. Okay. Going back here. Um, no, that, you don't have, something's wrong there. What's going on? This is, uh, pre, I'm looking at pre-market. I'm going to skip to the five minute here. No, no, I'm just at the day session. Yeah, there you go. Okay, there it is, right there. Yeah. Look at the signal to noise ratio out of the gate for the queues. Obviously, the day before, we had NVIDIA earnings. Yeah. That morning, we had Marvel earnings. But just, I just want the day session. Look at the signal to noise ratio. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're climbing the upper Bollinger Band without a pullback. You're above the VWAP, above the moving averages, and you're just pegged with high, high signal. Mm-hmm. For me to, to, to me to say the probability that it will close near its high that day is very different than today saying, I'm, I know where things are going to close on a probability basis. Um it's because of the engine behind something. So, you know, the market at the moment has kind of found a level here and it's trading sideways, right? Right. So the queues, right. the queues is the queues is trading back and forth now around, I think it's fifty period if you're looking at a one minute, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a little bit underneath the VWAP a bit but yeah, just like it that. has it has sort of set a level it doesn't seem interested in filling the gap uh I would say that it's very possible that we close you know uh towards you know a bit off the high um and that would be my my guess but again it depends on what news news comes in so well, yeah, uh, it just it just seems a little bit resilient to to wanting to retrace the bulls. The bulls uh, have been in charge in the tech space here. I, I don't think they're willing to you know let it flounder and and give up what it's gained. I think this is like let's 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 buy the pullbacks here on this. That's my guess. Yeah, I mean we'll see, but I mean really that's I think my favorite part of uh, you know trading baskets or trading pairs. Because you have all these longs and all these shorts, and you don't necessarily need to be right on whether the market is going to be up or down for the day. Because especially, you know, lately it's it's impacted with news if, you know, we get, get news that, hey, the debt ceiling deal is, um, you know, finally sealed and everything, and it's not just tentative, then, you know, that, that'll move it one direction or the other. 
but I find it a lot easier once you're in these positions. You can sort of wait for you can you can even wait for that headline to go, and you can then say, "Hey, well, it it looks like it, there's a positive headline or something like that," and you can uh, you know take off some of your shorts or or you know add on a bit of longs. Uh, that's let me yeah. let me share this screen here for a sec because I sure. want to comment on this here. Um, <clears throat> So this is the cues today. So we knew we we knew the pre market, you know, high. We we saw the action there, and and coming it was sliding down a little bit, which says okay, we're not we're not building. It's not like it's not like on Thursday morning where you know you were you were building pre market, right? This is a different scenario. You're actually decaying a little bit. So. So that's kind of putting a little bit of like um, maybe the market's getting a little bit, you know, too far ahead of itself. There may be some pullback. There may be some profit taking stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so you're kind of already like. Prepared. And you're saying, is there a chance that we fill the gap? So that has to be one of the scenarios that you run. I'm very big on running if then scenarios and saying okay what does it look like if we build on this what does it look like if we stay the same and trade sideways what does it look like if we drop and fill the gap and uh the opening range was choppy we did try to test the pre-market high yeah tested it, it just failed it was slightly yeah. shy of it yep okay it failed when it saw that it couldn't make gains on the pre-market at that point, it decided to head down. It crossed through the open, and then it crossed through the low of the opening range. And and at that point, what you have is high signal and an expectation of potentially going and filling the gap. So the only the only real clear trade is the one where it broke this low and was heading lower. That's the only clear trade for the day. The rest are all just by the pullbacks on the noise, trade around, you know, some central point of tendency, trade the noise, whatever, but not, not a clear sort of signal. So if you were going to do anything here in terms of using the market, because that's really your question is like where, you know, like from a naked perspective, where does the cues end the day? Mm -hmm. the, the using the market means that you have to have some information that you can change your posture, your weighting, and things like that. And even trading baskets like Josh was talking about here with uh, having the 10 longs and 10 shorts, you can add some weight if you have clear information. Yeah. So in this case, to buy a little SQQQ as it's breaking down, which is the inverse, the triple inverse, just buy a little bit. You don't have to do a lot. Buy a little bit, add some weight, and it drops and it says, oh, okay, well, not going down much anymore, not filling the gap couldn't quite make it there, We've given it enough time. You know, uh, the first 30 minutes are, are peak volatility generally. And, uh, you know, if you if you took, if you bought a little bit and took a bit of profit out of SQQQ uh, at any point in here, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, criticize you for that. It, it was fine, either here or down here. Uh, but that 10 a.m. is really important. And then from there, well, we've had just size sideways action. Nothing to do unless you want to be a noise trader. Yeah. So be very careful though on that. You know, like take take your take your clear information, but don't speculate. Like there's too many people that get whipsawed because they're thinking, oh, I think it's breaking out. Oh, I think it's breaking down, and it's not doing anything. So don't get whipsawed. Because I find that people in the first half hour, if they get on get on point, they can take some profit, boom. And then they stay messing around and getting whipsawed and give it all back and end up frustrated. In fact, that happened to me early in my career where um, I remember, you know, having a really, really great day. And I was taking a victory lap outside, going for a little stretch, you know, doing my victory lap, came back in and I took another trade and I lost money. And I was like. Oh man, I gave back some of my profit. I'll do another trade. I'll get it back. <laughs> well, 
and the cycle the never this starts. has never this has never left my memory mm -hmm. at the end of the day i was down the mere image of what i was up so how i'm how much i made in that first hour mm -hmm. i was now down the same amount so how crazy is that it's never never left my memory that and, and it's it's called what revenge trading or you know trading the money or just things that you shouldn't be doing you need to be trading the probabilities so guys that get an early move here and and uh say Ooh, that was a great trade what they're if they end up trying to press it every time it's doing a little move by thinking about the future prospects they'll end up getting whipsawed and give back the money that they made so just take your signals when they're there and be content don't be greedy be content with that and then wait for the next clear information okay yeah yeah that's uh that's good information good uh good tip see it's yeah again a lot harder to uh, trade noise than it is to trade signal uh, but anyway it's a different perspective it's not it's not necessarily harder it's a different perspective so in trading noise it'd be like Okay, I'm just going to be like a machine by the pullback, by, you know, and sell to the midpoint by the pullback, sell to the midpoint, sell the sell the rally by by it back at the midpoint. Um, it's just it's just that, and, and then what happens is it'll break out and you'll get caught, mm -hmm. and then you have to be disciplined to to dump it and you know hands off while the relative strength breakout people get their time. Everybody gets their time. Right. right. So, yeah. but there, but historically, there's more noise than there is, you know, trend uh, intraday. Like, yeah. look at look at the returns. Overnight overnight returns are are positive. Um, on average, the market does you know just over nine percent a year. Okay, so overnight returns, but intraday, it's benign. It's it's basically zero. Mm -hmm. it, there's so much noise intraday. So uh, just keep that in mind that, you know, yeah, it, it does pay to be a noise trader, but so it's a totally different hat than being a relative strength or breakout trader. It's just totally different and you have to respect it. And the breakout trader is going to get caught once in a while. The relative strength trader is going to get caught once in a while. The uh, noise trader is going to get caught also. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? If you if you make ten good trades and, you, and then you lose on the one where it breaks out, yeah, you might give back three or four worth of the ten. So you know you're not giving back one unit. You'll probably give back three or four if you're getting caught. Yeah, but still, you still got six units to you know cash, money in the bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of possibilities in the markets. All right. Well, I think that'll okay. do it for today. Uh, S P futures currently sitting, uh, still up about uh, 0.15% at uh, 4219. Uh, and make sure to tune in to uh, the closing print. That'll be at 3:30 Eastern with Joel. And uh, we'll see you guys again next week for another pre-market prep with stock odds. All right. Good success this week. All right. Thanks, guys.